With great power comes great responsibility. This is one of the themes or morals of Spider-Man. I will connect this to the Christian life. Uh, but first, why is this a theme within Spider-Man? Um, we need to know why this is a statement commonly attributed and focused upon Spider-Man and how he should respond with the great powers he has, you know, being having all this super spider skills uh, and senses. Uh, it comes from Amazing Fantasy, uh, which it was Amazing Fantasy number 15, uh, which came out in 1962. Uh, it is the first comic book that featured Spider-Man. So right from the get-go, one of the main morals that drives Spider-Man to do the things that he does, to put his life at danger, to save people, to rescue people, to fight evil, to fight for the cause of good, is um, shown here in this comic book and leads to that famous phrase, with great power comes great responsibility. Uh, so here you got Spider-Man, and he is coming into this apartment complex, and you got this guy saying, made it, and he says, I'm safe now, that cop can never get uh, get down to the lobby as fast as I can in this high-speed express elevator, lucky that goon in a costume didn't stop me, what's with you, mister, all you had to do was trip him or hold him just for a minute, and of course, Spider-Man, Peter Parker says, sorry, pal. That's your job. I'm through being pushed around by anyone. From now on, I just look out for number one. That means me. Uh, and then later, a cop tells Peter Parker, Bad news, son. Your uncle's been shot. Murdered. Uncle Ben? Dead? No, no, it can't be. Who did it? Who shot him? It was a burglar. Your uncle surprised him. But don't worry, lad. We've got him trapped. He's in the old Acme warehouse at the waterfront. We'll get him. So then he switches back in his... Uh, the Spider-Man costume and goes gets this guy and then what happens he says that that face it's oh no it can't be it's the fugitive who ran past me the one I didn't stop when I had the chance so he realizes he could have stopped this guy that ended up killing his uncle and because he didn't act when he could have tragedy happened to ones that he loved and a short distance away my fault all my fault if only I had stopped him when I could have but I didn't and how Uncle Ben is dead Oh, and now Uncle Ben is dead. And a lean, silent figure slowly fades into the gathering darkness, aware at last that in this world, with great power, there must also come great responsibility. And so a legend is born, and a new name is added to the roster. Um, let's see, what's it say there? Roster of those who make the world of fantasy the most exciting realm of all. Excellent. Uh, so if great power comes great responsibility, that's how it all came about. How does this relate to us as Christians? Well, as Christians, we've been given great power. Um, we have the Holy Spirit within us, God in us. Um, 1 Corinthians 12, Romans 12, both talk about Christians each being given spiritual gifts, um, things that we ordinarily could not do apart from the Holy Spirit. We have been granted, each of us. Uh, both of these talk about the body of Christ in which each of these gifts are necessary for the mutual edification and building up of the body of Christ. Not just so within the body of Christ Christians, but also for the spreading of God's word. Um, one of the last things that Jesus told his disciples, and according to Matthew 28, is go make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and teaching them everything that I have commanded you. Um, so that is a task, that's a responsibility which has been given to us, a role. Uh, that we need to do in uh, the body of Christ and his kingdom, and that is to add more people to his kingdom. Uh, if people um, can't hear the gospel and we don't give it to them, well, how can they be saved, as Paul says in Romans 10? So we're called to share this gospel, and Jesus, in Matthew 28, uh, in assurance of this task, says that he's with us always, surely, till the end of the age. Um, so Jesus Christ, all authority has been given to him, and he's with you as you go about your day fulfilling this Great Commission. Uh, in Acts chapter 1, this would be Luke's version of the Great Commission, uh, he says that you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you to be my witnesses. And he says you'll be his witness to the end of the age. So in Matthew's version, the Great Commission, uh, you have the authority of Jesus with you. Jesus is with you. Um, when you go about this Great Commission, and in Luke's version in Acts 1, the Holy Spirit is with you, empowering you 
along this this route. Um, 1 Timothy 1.8, uh, Paul reminds Timothy that you do not have a spirit of timidity, but you've been given a spirit of boldness. So if the Holy Spirit, we've been given boldness, we have God in us, we've been given special gifts by the Lord, and we have this task that's been given to us. So um, with what we know in Christ, the knowledge that we have from Him, from His Word, that has been revealed to us by the Holy Spirit, um, and with the giftings of the Holy Spirit and the church together, working together to support each other in, weak, in areas where one may be weak but another person strong, as the Spirit has given us um, certain gifts, uh, we need to collectively then have this responsibility to share the gospel. And I think the great news here is that um, the power that we have is the power of God. And namely, the power of God that we have uh, and what we are responsible then to share, right, is the gospel. Uh, because Romans 1.16 says that the gospel is the power of God to save for all who believe. So the power we ultimately have is the gospel. That is, the, that is where the power of God lies, to save sinners. We share that gospel, which is part of our responsibility. So it's great to me. Uh, we have a lot of power that's been given us by God, and we've been equipped by Him to do great works. And our role then would be to submit to Him, resign to Him, and to uh, just be at peace in Him, knowing that our sins are forgiven and that He has prepared great works for us to do, as it says in Ephesians 2.10. You ever thought of yourself as Spider-Man before? That you've been given great power by God? And with that great power comes great responsibility. I don't know if you wake up every morning thinking along those lines, but really we are, in a way, little superheroes to the world. Some people say these superheroes in these comic books could be archetypes or point to um, mankind's need for divinity or need for God. And here we are, as Christians, having this power of God um, and having the ability to save people and give them what they ultimately need um, above all else, which is a relationship with God and forgiveness of sins. Um, and to be connected with the one who has beaten sin, death, and the devil. That is Jesus Christ. Um, don't forget to subscribe to my video, please. Also, you'll see some links that you can click to to go see some other videos there. And certainly check out my website, contradictmovement.org. God bless you all. Peace.